Hi everyone and welcome to Happy Trails Hiking. On this station you will find content about park travel as well as living a life, healthy lifestyle. My name is Kay and this is the Healthy Lifestyle Show. Today is Travel Tuesday and I have a special treat for you. Some of you have asked about, you know, these professionals that I have coming on that are travel professionals and where I find them and you know where I met them and what they actually do well this week I get to be one so I'm gonna take you along we are in Ottumwa Iowa and we're gonna find out more about Ottumwa and what's here and see how professionals in travel do their jobs so uh, let's get started for our visit to Atamwa, we were hosted at Hotel Atamwa. It is an historic hotel on 2nd Street. The Schwartz family has restored the hotel after it sat vacant for almost a decade. The hotel houses two restaurants, the Tom Tom Tap and the 2nd Street Cafe. The Hotel Atamwa shows vision and faith in the city. Our itinerary started with a happy hour in the Tom Tom Tap. This Native American themed lounge is where you get to meet the travel professionals for the visit. Um, my name is Danielle. Um, I'm from Wisconsin. I have 15 different sites. Um, I do traveling under traveling cheese head. Um, my daughter is the one who is the youngest University of Wisconsin student ever. She started at the age of nine. Wow. Um, so we have a site for her and kind of focuses on you know, STEM and children's education, things like that. And um, I'm a published author. I do a lot of different books. Um, and it all works around when your child is 13 and you're on campus, you have to be chatting. So she was so excited, like, you're going to help me take notes. And I'm like, no, I'm going to keep writing. <laughs> um, I'm Jamie. Um, I blog for my own blog, Cornfields and High Hills. But I also do a lot of other stuff for other people. Um, I would be considered a newer blogger. I've been doing it for three years. I left the corporate world um, to stay at home and to work from home and start a blog. My husband was a sports blogger for about 15 years. He encouraged me to go into that. He no longer does that, <laughs> but he helped me get started. And so um, I have four kids and I do a lot of family blogging. I homeschool two of those kids and I'm a social media manager for a musician, um, and they travel a lot. And I'm also a writer, and I'm a writer for the City Moms of Greater Indianapolis. So I do a ton of local stuff. So I'm a media rep for a lot of the local Indianapolis museums, and do a lot of local Indiana travel. So, kind of my story. So hi, I'm Kay, and I'm with Happy Trails Hiking, and mostly we're on YouTube, and I'm a blogger instead of a blogger, mostly. If you've checked out my happytrailshiking.com, you'll notice that it's very short paragraphs uh, and lots of video. So um, that's what I do. I, I like to show off the places where Matt and I travel, um, and you know, and video and Instagram and Facebook. I've been doing this full time for a year now, so that's what I'm doing. This is my actual first fam trip ever. So, yeah. Welcome. Cool. Thanks. I'm Jim, and uh, from Omaha, uh, blog The Walking Tourist, and we've done that for nine years now. And also, I'm married to Lisa, who is her business partner. Oh, Lisa. So, yeah. Um, she is off to San Diego tomorrow for business, so hmm. on her little gimpy leg. So, um, let's see, blogger, uh, freelance writer, online content creator. I actually started doing that after getting laid off a couple of times. Um, you know, corporate world. Yep. Yeah, and then anyway, uh, let's see. So yeah, we've written. Um, uh, we published two books, 100 Things to Do in Omaha Before You Die and Unique Eats and Eateries of Omaha. And we just turned in our third book to the publisher, 100 Things to Do in Nebraska Before You Die. Nice. So Yay. hopefully when they come back, I won't have a whole lot of edits to make, but, you know, I know the game. <laughs> so, yeah. um, 
and then uh, I do a lot of ghost writing for other for other bloggers and um, and I do like I freelance write so um, so that's that. Um, we're from Columbia, Missouri. We have the blog Hodgepodge Hippie. Um, basically, we kind of blog about a lot of stuff because Hodgepodge. Um, but mainly camping. We really enjoy camping and traveling, um, and then family friendly stuff. Um, we do some hiking. Um, we're kind of getting known, I think, around town for tandem bike riding. That's what we do every day. We try to ride between 15 and 20 miles on our tandem, which we brought. Wow. So if there's a bike trail, <laughs> we might get out either early in the morning if the wind dies. Yeah. I will show you okay. on our that way over to dinner tonight. I'll show Because we like to position and take some fun photos if, if it's a possibility. Um, we've been doing, well, I up and quit my job in the corporate world about two years ago. I was HR manager of about 500 employees. So I hired and fired a lot of people and got sick of doing it. And sitting behind a desk every day. And so I came home one day. He was a stay-at-home dad for our youngest. He did that for, what, six years? Mm -hmm. Came home and said, I'm going to quit my job. And he said, what? And I said, yes. <laughs> so we did that. And we've been doing this for two years. And um, we've had lots of fun. How are you? Well, I'm Sarah Brewers. And I run travel with Sarah. I go wherever the plane, train, ship, or car will go. And I'm co-owner of the Midwest Travel Network. And I travel and I look for bread pudding. That's kind of my yes, little thing. People know that. Ooh, bread, bread pudding is what I'm always on the hunt for. And I don't know, I guess it's a crazy simple little life. And it's another, I'm also an auctioneer. Now that you've met the team, let's get on to dinner. Dinner tonight was at the Bridgeview Center. There will be more on this wonderful facility later on in the week. For now, it's sufficient to say that Chef Bob and the staff at the Bridgeview Center rolled out the red carpet for us at dinner that night. As you can tell here, our travel professionals are impressed with the presentation of our dinner. It was then that I realized that I needed to take a photo of all the food that I ate that week. This dinner was our opportunity to meet our hosts and find out more about Atumwa. One three-day, two-day conference can bring in an economic impact of like a quarter of a million bucks. So, uh, you know, and it's, mm -hmm. and you know, people, like I say, it's a public space, so people come in here and walk, and, mm -hmm. you know, we have our office here, so. Nice. So the theater, that's where the musicals in yeah, yeah. all that. Yeah, and there's a humongous um, exhibit hall, too, which is 30,000 square feet, so. Your civic theater uses it, and I want to see your kids' groups plus some professional performances, so it's yep. really a multi-purpose yep. space. Exactly, exactly. Plus used for conferences, and they do mm -hmm. all the speaking up there. And the Coliseum was built in 1934. Oh, thanks. And it was here until 2005. <laughs> when you go through the lobby, we have the original columns from the Coliseum that was here, um, specifically to remember that part of the building because the Coliseum was a huge part of Ottoman history. So being able to build a brand new, updated civic center to Ottoman was amazing, but we didn't want to get rid of all of the memories, all of the things that people here will always remember. So being able to save those, being able to save some of the front of the building, to be able to say, yes, we have this future, but don't forget that this is where we came from. So that's very special. In just a few hours, I had heard so many facts about Atamwa that I knew day two would be a whirlwind. Off to bed. Well, we're getting ready for day two. Day one, or evening of day one, was pretty awesome. Chef Bob made a wonderful dinner for us last night, and Andy rolled out the red carpet for us, and that, that was awesome. So I can't wait to see what's in store, and um, yeah, just Come along, let's get this day started. Breakfast was at the Second Street Cafe, and then on to meet Holly, who was going to take us on a downtown walking tour. Atumwa has been a Main Street community since 2006. Uh, Fred has been the director for, I think, five, about four or five years now. Um, and things have really started, I mean, things have been progressing, but the last five years uh, has been a huge transformation. Even, I think Google Maps has updated, but even Street View a few months ago looked completely different than it does now. Holly showed us around a couple of blocks of downtown Ottumwa and explained the eco-friendly alley art and how they are using the spaces to bring the community together. 
According to their Facebook page, the mission of Main Street Ottumwa is to strengthen and revitalize Ottumwa's central business district using the comprehensive Main Street four-point approach. You can find out more at www.mainstreetottumwa.com. Uh, from this block, oh, wow. this is the building on the corner, okay. uh, yes. which would made a huge transformation. Right. Uh, Where's the hardware store? It's gotta be next. Oh yeah, the hardware store yeah, transformation, oh, wow. taking the slip covers off. Yeah. yeah. Holy cow. As we went about our week, I asked the travel professionals the one question I most wanted to know. This is Sarah, and you met her on Travel Tuesday one time, but Sarah, what does a travel professional do in your definition? In my definition, a travel professional is someone that helps a destination or attraction tell their story. That's what yeah. we do, we're storytellers. Awesome. That's awesome. it. Awesome. Cool. Well, thanks for inviting me to come along on this storytelling journey. Otumwa has been a blast. The stories that are going to come out of Otumwa, can't wait to see them all. Oh my gosh. It's going to be And you so guys fun. are going to love them. As part of our tour for downtown, we got to see some of the apartments that were new developments in old buildings. After our outdoor tour of town, we decided that we needed to come in and warm up a little bit. Top Hat Coffee is one of Otumwa's four local coffee shops. Behind the Top Hat, they have a soup kitchen that they serve out of too. And so that's uh, something that's very unique. And I think that that's worth showing you. We serve anywhere from 100 to 300. Wow. At the beginning of the month, we, it's less, and by the end of the month, people are broke. <laughs> so, it's, it's, so, they don't, so it's anybody who needs anybody, a meal? Anybody can come in here. Yep, we have a donation box over there. If they want to leave a donation, mm -hmm. you know, we have some, uh, even business people come in and eat from the area. Okay. You know, and then okay. they just leave a donation there. Our next stop was the Wapello County Historical Museum and Train Depot. We have estimated right now of about 40,000 objects in our collection. Mm -hmm. One of the largest for county uh, historical societies in the state. Uh, and ultimately about 14,000 square feet of exhibit space, which is about two-thirds the size of anybody else at the county level also. Uh, it is a building that is still laid out very much at this time, as it was, of an administrative and operational headquarters for Burlington Northern on the upper level, uh, luggage and baggage service on the lower level of the museum, and then the lobby that you came in to begin with uh, that would have served uh, all of that train and freight service. Uh, we end up with a, a somewhat of an eclectic mix of, of exhibits. On one hand, they are uh, thematic and topical, moving slightly in chronological, but moving away from that and staying more and more toward thematic. So we start with natural history, pre-Columbian, through early settlement into the region. Uh, a bit of religious history is, is splattered into that. To some rooms that I think were uh, really just lock, stock, and barrel picked up from the original uh, location of the museum, brought here and recreated. So it's a moment in time, a, a, a uh, Victorian kitchen, uh, a one-room schoolhouse, and then exhibit space throughout that, uh, that traces the commerce and industrial history uh, and the cultural history from there. Thank you. Thank you. And it was secured by the CEO at that time of John Morrell and Company, uh, George Foster. George Foster was a big booster in the community. He's also responsible for the architectural redevelopment of this building. So it is very much uh, his purpose in trying to be part of, of a better company was to also be a better community member. Uh, <coughs> the engine itself, uh, he had relocated and donated to the community for $1. And can you imagine they actually built this separate line to park it there? <laughs> Turned it off and it's never been relit since. The museum was full of artifacts from the county and we could have spent hours there. But we had a meeting with the mayor to get to, so on to City Hall. In our meeting with Mayor Tom Lazio, he conveyed his thoughts about the great things happening in Ottumwa. Ottumwa, let us surprise you kind of thing because we did go through a kind of a branding and, and uh, uh, just the whole idea of what's unique about it somewhat. And I think uh, 
that must surprise you. We have so many good things going on here that people don't even know about. Uh, you know, we have a spark tank down on Main Street, which is a high school program for kids to get real life job experience in some of our businesses. Uh, That's awesome. Which is really a great program for young people. Um, we, like I said, architecture, we have two sympathy music groups here. I mean, for Southeast Iowa, that's community our size. Have you been in Bridgeview? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we had dinner What a beautiful facility. We're going to do, do a tour uh, tomorrow. Okay, great. great. Um, the airport, um, we just have a lot of things that people don't know about. And, and, and I think sometimes we that have been here the longest are sometimes the worst salespeople. People that come in from out of town. I had some friends come in a couple of weekends ago and stay with us. And they love this. And, you know, we have golf courses and river and, and things that we just take for granted. Hunting and fishing down here is outstanding. Uh, and deer in my backyard every night. We have people that fly down the river and fish in the river. Uh, you know, so there are a lot of great things going on. We just have not been very good at promoting our own self interest. So. We made it to lunch on day one at the famous canteen lunch in the alley. <laughs> this unique lunch counter has a limited menu, but when you come in, you have to get a canteen. These loose meat sandwiches are super yummy, but don't forget to save room for pie. Mine was peanut butter. <laughs> Our afternoon adventures today is at Pioneer Ridge Nature Center. We're going to a park. Tim's excited. Pioneer Ridge Nature Area is a 995 acre park with a nature center that has interpretive displays and some programming. It also has 12 miles of multi-use trails, four fishing ponds, and a bird observation blind. It has two modern log cabins and two camping cabins, as well as a campground. Uh, Walpole County established itself by the vote of the people of Walpole County in 1977. These cabins were put up around 70, uh, 2007, 2009. Did one, did another one, then did the camping ones. I actually had to book them for today because usually they've got deer hunters in them this time of the year. We have a guy chomping at the bit to get here and get in the next day because he's coming from New York. Oh, so wow, yeah. We have them come in from all over the bow hunt in the year. Yeah. This time of the year. They're popular the rest of the year. Graduation parties, a lot of times weddings. They'll have their wedding in the hay barn and then they'll have the bridal party in here, spend the night, have family get together. Uh, anniversaries and then family getaways. So, yeah. any questions that come What's to it mind? Sleep? Hmm? What's this one sleep? Uh, six. Six. Could we take a look at that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, around the park, I've noticed that they have these quotes, and I thought those are really cool. And they're different ones. Really like them. Guys, this is Tim, and he's mean to me. I'm kidding. He's awesome. I'm only mean in return, not a self-defense. Pretty much. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> it's all good. We've been having a great time in a tunnel in yes. a tumble this week. Yes? yes, we have. All right. And I want to know from you, what does a travel professional do? It's a good question. I wish Thanks. I knew. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. No. Hmm. Uh, as far as I'm concerned... Um, the approach I take is uh, getting an opportunity to visit a lot of uh, cities or towns. Uh, mm -hmm. My preference is mostly like off the beaten path, mm -hmm. ones that don't get a lot of foot traffic and be able to share experiences um, and stories about those locations with, with readers and followers and, and kind of share the love for gotcha. communities. Um, so we don't just go and eat stuff? No, well, you know, that's the perk. That's a perk. Um, it's not all fun and games because, you know, it, it may look like fun and games, but, you know, behind every behind every experience, you got to write about it. So yeah. while while we might spend a lot of time having fun doing things and, ex, you know, and experiencing a lot of, a lot of uh, especially uh, special, having a lot of special experiences, um, 
when you get home, it's time to write about them. Yeah. So you, you put in a lot of time in the back end um, writing about it and sharing stories. And, and you want to present it in a, in a way that interests readers sure. and, you know, and, and, and fairly shows off the community or the attractions that we visit. Thanks. You're welcome. Our next stop today is the American Gothic House in Eldon, Iowa. So, of course, American Gothic House. It's called the Dibble House on the National Register of Historic Places. Um, that's because it was built by the Dibble family in 1881 to 1882. Um, but the house really became significant, of course, in 1930, which is when Grant Wood visited. Um, he was in Eldon for an art exhibition that was going on in town. He was driving around town with a student named John Sharp. Um, there actually used to be a road that ran right in front of the house. You can see over here, or we've cut it off now from the visitor center here. They were driving along down this road, and Grant Wood saw the house, and he told John to stop the car because he needed to get a sketch of it. Um, he was struck by the house. Um, he said at one point it was pretentious for such a little house to have such a large window in it. Um, but he took that sketch back to Cedar Rapids with him and he decided to paint American Gothic. Um, Cedar Rapids is where he did all of that painting, recruiting the models and all of that. Um, in that same year is when he took it to the Art Institute of Chicago. Um, it got third place. It was actually almost rejected from the contest altogether, but somebody stepped in and said, no, I really think this needs to be included, and he got third. He got $300 for that, and an additional $300 for the Art Institute to purchase the painting, so $600 altogether. Um, about $8,000 today is what we say. When life imitates art, well, I had to try. <laughs> and Chilo runs Marco and Main here, so she's gonna give you a little walkthrough, tell you what's going on here, and kind of segue into what's going on in town. And uh... Thank you. That's awesome. All right. So, as Andy said, I'm the operations manager here at the market. Um, I bring in downtime after happy hour and before dinner so I decided to go take in sunset down on the Des Moines River. Tonight for dinner we are at Appanoo's Rapids. Yes we are eating again however there are more people to talk to and more information to find out. Now I'm the CEO for Greater Tema Partners in Progress. So what that is, it's a, it's a sort of an umbrella of a bunch of different organizations. So under this umbrella that, that we oversee is the uh, Greater Temwa Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, Main Street of Temwa, uh, the uh, Temwa Economic Development Corporation, uh, our, the financial side to our Bridgeview Center, and the uh, Temwa Area Chamber of Commerce. So all those organizations uh, we oversee, uh, really our motto is, what we do is we're sort of the gateway for economic build, economic development into the greater Tumwa area. Okay. So anybody wants to start a business, who wants to expand a business, who we, we go out and get business, it'll come through our office one, one form or another. Not only did we have questions for people, but they had questions for us. I think that's a risk that we all take as, yeah. you know, the, what I never, we do. You know what? That never even occurred to me. But sometimes, and I will tell you this, that as a solo traveler, if I'm traveling somewhere and I'm in a, a place that's maybe a little sketchy, I'm not going to post anything until the day after I leave. Ah. Mm -hmm. so, because that so, way they know that, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's those things, you know, that come into play too. So, yeah. but so how often do you travel? How often does everybody travel? She's always traveling. I was going to say, Sarah's, <laughs> Sarah, it seems like Sarah's always on the road. Yeah. 
Yeah, okay. I leave here tomorrow, go somewhere else, yeah. just like you do. Mm -hmm. I'm yeah. on the road for eight days, but I do mine chunk traveling. Yeah, because I have kids, and okay. so I travel a bunch and then don't travel a lot. Yeah, <laughs> okay. I get that. Yeah. I I'm a freelance writer and I do a lot of online content too. So um, it just kind of. Then I'm also an author, so it just kind of depends on what I'm working on. Start out day three on our adventure in Atumwa. We're back at the Bridgeview Center and we're going to get a tour today. Come on along. All right, guys, this is Jamie. She's got a really cool blog. Tell us what your blog title is because it's awesome. It's called Cornfields and High Hills. Isn't that great? <laughs> Okay, so Jamie, what yes. is a travel professional? So a travel professional is somebody who shares with the world, their community, their audience, um, all about like the neat places there are to discover. For me, it's within the Midwest and within the US, and specifically within Indiana also. So I write, I blog, share videos, share stories, um, specifically for families and couples. Awesome, well thank you for coming along, this has been a blast. Thank you. Come to visit Atomwa. Make sure that you stop by the office here in the Bridgeview Center. Say hi to uh, Andy and Laura. Awesome. Yeah, I think we've three. So Bridgeview Center is coming up on 13 years old. We opened January 1st, 2007. Uh, but before us, mainly on that on that side of the building stood the Atomwa Armory. Uh, the Atomwa Armory was built in 1934. Oh, the cover stone, the cornerstone is actually covered up with that little brake station. But he, there's a cornerstone down there in that column that has the 1934 date on it. Uh, that's when the armory opened, built by the federal government. It opened with a dirt floor. And if you look up top, uh, you'll see 113 up there. And that, it was 113th Brigade of, I believe, the U.S. Army. And it was a horse battalion. And then World War II came, and then became, you know, mechanized in, in World War II. And so then sometime either during the war or, short, or right after the war, the federal government came in, they put it in a concrete floor. And then it basically became an armory for Jeeps and some other equipment like that. Sometime, I don't know the exact date, but sometime in the late 40s, getting very close or right around 1950, the federal government's like, we don't need all these armories around the country. Um, you know, World War II is coming on. And so basically they gifted the armory to the city of Atumwa. Okay, so the theater nerd in me is a little geeking out right now, but isn't this cool? It's an amazing space. So cool. Ah, oh, awesome theater. Great job, Atomo. The theater at the Bridgeview Center seats over 600 people and features headliner shows as well as community ones. Uh, yeah, that's for some who's played it. Uh, not everybody signs the wall, but a little bit of theater lore is if you play our Steinway, you can sign the wall if you choose to. Not every artist wants to, but most do. I can let them, yeah. Nope, bacon wrapped jalapenos. Well, we came back because. Um, <laughs> we love you, Chef Bob. Yes. Oh my God. If you stick around and come, we got a big press conference at noon day, you can have all the bacon you want. Foodie Friday, right there, baby. So, obviously, this is where your meal was prepared on Monday. Uh, this is Chef Bob's home. Um, this is real, well. This is the guts and home base of our food and beverage operation. For us, on the business side, uh, this is uh, I'm not going to say call it a profit center, but the revenue that we generate out of food and beverage um, basically uh, makes up for some of the other areas of our operation that are not as uh, lucrative. Um, this is much more. We kind of call this our blank canvas because that's really what it is. We'll do bull riding in here where we bring in 75 dump truck loads of dirt. And basically throughout this whole center here and all across the back will be dirt and we'll have all the chutes, all the cattle, or all the bulls will be back there. We got five chutes and the bulls will come out and it's eight seconds of bone jarring uh, fun. That ain't easy. I did that last month. Scott had had us move on with the tour, but then Chef Bob called us back Chef Bob just called us back to the kitchen, so we had to come back. It's important. <laughs> yeah. Sarah, what did you just call this? A food emergency, because that's what Thena called it. <laughs> Thena, you started the food emergency. I can't wait. <laughs> okay, food nice. emergency. All right, this Thea. And she has a wonderful blog. And she's from Missouri, too. So tell us what your blog is. Uh, Hodgepodge Hippie. There we go. And 
I want to know, what does a travel professional do? So I think everybody's answer might vary a little bit, um, but for us and our blog, being travel professionals, um, we love to go to towns and find all the little hidden gems, and we really like to focus um, on places you can go easily, kind of like a weekend getaway or a day getaway, um, and get off the beaten path. So if there's something already super popular in town, maybe we'll highlight it in you know some way, but we're really gonna put our focus on things, um, the little mom and pops or the unique eateries and different things like that. So to us, that is what we do when we travel, right? Awesome. And for you all, they have a tandem bicycle. It's really fun. So make sure you're following along on all of their Instagram and, and Facebook and Twitter posts. Yeah, you can watch us ride the trails. It's fun. Not only is this really cool teepee in Greater Ottumwa Park, but there's 340 acres to explore. So after Greater Ottumwa Park, we headed over to the River Trail, and they got me climbing up the levee now. Here we go. Actually, the trail is about 16 miles, and our, uh, there's two places you can cross the other, and then the other side, Bridgman Center. So you can hike and bike, um, you know, uh, along the trails here, right? Museum stop here in Ottumwa area is the Air Power Museum. It's pretty amazing in there and I can't wait to show you around. Let's go on in. The Air Power Museum's mission is to preserve our aviation heritage as well as educate both present and future generations about that heritage. My grandfather brought, bought his chunk of the property in six, late 69 and built the first runway in his first time here. First building that went by coming the driveway. And then uh, his business partner passed away about the same time and left the museum a large sum of money with the stimulus of the life of the property and self contained. And it just made sense to keep the two organizations together since my granddad started them both. Continuing my interviews, this is Danelle, and Danelle. Hello. <laughs> she, she has so many blog sites, but which one would you like us to check out first? Well, Operation 40K, that's my main site. We save $40,000 in less than a year. Awesome. And so it's a lot of family-friendly restaurants, recipes, things like that too. But um, Traveling Cheesehead is my travel writing site. Nice. Because from Wisconsin, Traveling Cheesehead, so yeah. It's a thing. It's All a right. thing. Right. So, Danelle, what does a traveling professional do? Well, a lot of people think that you just get paid to travel. <laughs> right. <laughs> Which we laugh at that. Um, but when we get a travel itinerary and we're going and visiting a site, they have us kind of running all over the place for three or four days, depending on how long we're there. And that's not the real work. The real work is behind the scenes then, looking over our photos, crafting our stories, looking for SEO so that our stories are seen when you do a search above somebody else's. Because of course, our voice is the best voice for that one. Everything and then there's the editing. So we may be spending three days in the location, but then when we're pulling together the stories for the location, that can take a couple of weeks on the back end of it. Um, and then we look at our sites the following year and say, oh, okay, so it's McHenry County, Illinois again, and their fall stuff is getting up. Let me, how can I refresh that content? Like, you know, the best things to do when you visit McHenry, Illinois, or fun things to do with the kids in McHenry County. I mean, things like that. So, again, it's like a constantly evolving thing where we're able to tell the stories about all the amazing places we go, people we meet, food we taste, and things sure. that we get to do with you. Awesome. Well, thank you for that answer. Sure. There you go, guys. Okay, I got one person left. But Andy's been dragging us around all over Southeast Iowa. <laughs> and so you can blame this guy for all the fun that I've gotten to have. But what does a professional traveler do? What do you expect a blogger or a traveler to do when they come to see you, Andy? I expect them to not live on top of the community, but live in the community. In other words, not just see the sights. I expect them to talk to the people. I expect them to taste our food. I expect them to find out what makes our community shake, what's good about our community, what's bad about our community. Because I think that's what folks want to know now. 
it's it's more it's more about just what you have to offer. It's how you offer it. So that's I think what a professional. That's what we like to see when when we have bloggers and writers such as you come and visit us. But the question about what is a professional a travel who is a, tra a travel professional? Mm -hmm. I think a travel professional is someone who's professional enough to know that you don't know everything because the travel industry changes daily and you have to learn how to adapt to it and act accordingly and that's what any smart CPB DMO chamber director does. Excellent. Well, thanks for having us in Atumla. It's been my pleasure. Last stop here in Atumla, Mimi's. Let's go eat. visit to Atumwa, Iowa. I hope you that you've enjoyed this video and if you did please be sure to share it with someone else you think would enjoy this video. I need you to do one more thing for me. Will you please check in the description and go visit all the folks that are linked in the description. Sure would appreciate that and tell them you came from Happy Trails Hiking. And also last thing it's the third thing. Go out and live the life you love today. And remember, you are not replaceable. Have a great day, guys.